Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I think you know that. Mitch behind the camera. We each have our roles here. What happens, I don't know if you know this, but I'm the guy that has to figure out what to do each week. And then Mitch shows up and he says, what are we doing? In a little while, on, on May the 7th, we have a swap meet and I want to take a bike there. It's a Romax. We did a bunch of stuff on the Romax earlier, last year, whatever. And I wanted a stand and I thought I would I would buy a stand. I'd contacted a couple of local bike shops and it's the stand that goes over the down tube and then under the bottom bracket and then goes out to the side. I don't know if you remember those. They were really common back in showing my age in the 70s, 80s, maybe even into the 90s. Do you think I can find one now? There's something similar on eBay. What I decided to do is to make a custom stand for the Romax. So I got some cardboard. Look at that cardboard and then I got metal here. So this is going to be a one-off stand. So this is how it works. I did a drawing. Here's the bottom bracket of the Romax. This is the down tube. This is the bottom bracket height, 11 and a half inches, and this is the ground. So there's gonna be a rod that comes down like that, and then there's gonna be a cross piece that rests on the ground. So that's gonna go like that. And then what I did here, you can see this is number one. This is gonna be inch and an eighth aluminum. And so this is going to go through that and then this will be bolted in on each side. So that holds it up like that. And then I did version number two because I needed something to come up here. So I made this piece that's going to go like that. And then there's going to be a piece that goes that bolts onto the side. It goes bolts up, bolts onto this, goes over the down tube, and then there's going to be some rubber so that, that the down tube doesn't get scratched. And then here is version three. So let's just cut this out, and then we're going to make this out of this piece here. And this only has to be on the left-hand side. There's the piece. This aims down towards this, this cross tube, and then... This bolts onto one side, and then there's a hoop over there. So anyway, let's have some fun, make some stuff. I guess we'll go to the lathe. We'll face off the ends of the tube. This is heavy wall tube, nice and strong. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for tuning in. So you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Okay, so that goes in like that. It's just to make this a little bit stronger to make it line up. So that feeds in like that. There, can you see how it comes through? So I'll do a little weld over these spots that came through and on the top. Then go around like that. And that's gonna be the pretty skookum stand. It was really thin, it was burning away. Okay, I'll get a bigger rod and I'll see if I can fill it up and then we'll just 
grind it down. Okay, well it <clears throat> You notice how I'm filing along? So the file is going forward, but it's also going along. I'm not doing that. That's what helps to make it flat. So that's going to go like that. that. That's the ground level. So I still have a, a, a little bit I have to cut off here. Let's work on this now. We're going to you got to cut out inch and a half hole, maybe inch and a half plus a few thou, because the bottom bracket is inch and a half, but then it's clear coated, so I can measure it with my, my digital caliper. That's what I'll do. I don't know where to set the boring bar, because it's a single point. Okay, that'll work. And then if I clamp this down too somehow, if I can do them both at the same time, that'll be better. If I drill two holes here and tap them, then I can bolt this plate to that. That's a very handy box of Allen screws and fasteners. So what's nice about this at this moment is that these inch and a half holes or thereabouts, those are perfect and the holes line up perfectly as well. So, so if I put this on now, and Mitch had an idea that I should cut them both at the same time and I like that idea so we're going to go with that idea. I'll take off the cardboard, put the Allen screw back in, actually both Allen screws. And then we'll go over and we'll, we'll do some bandsaw. It's funny how things take longer than I ever anticipate. And if the job gets larger in size, Mitch tells me that's called mission creep.
Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. Looks pretty skookum, doesn't it? That's how that goes. So you can see here, around here, what, what has to come out for the fillet braise. I can kind of see what has to come out here. That's where the fillet braise is like that. So this has to come out a little bit like that and also across like that. You see how this all fits together now? Is it making sense to you? This is going to go through like that. And it won't go through all the way, but it'll go through maybe two thirds of the way. Okay, let's go, let's go to the mill and we'll, we'll drill and ream some more holes. So I'm going to get the halfway point on this. So I touch it over there. I zero my Y. I come back over to the other side. It's 823. So now I do half and I do the Y here, not there. 411. So there we go. So I'll put it to 411. I'll put it down to zero. There we go. So that's, that's halfway. Okay, here we go. Is that a good fit? Look at that. Looks like a good fit. Oh, I see. It took a little burr. It had something inside there. Well, let's put this together and just see what it looks like. Okay, she fits. Oh, that's pretty snug now because that doesn't turn. Right. That's okay because I don't need a set screw now because this is pretty snug. So what do you think? Overkill. It all has to be sanded and, and polished. Well, not polished, but it has to be sanded smooth. Made, made a nice finish. So we're going to, we have to have to take away some metal there. So maybe we'll do that next. Make it fit the bottom bracket. And then we just have to put on the arm and then we can see how it fits. You can feel it hitting right about there. And that's coming back at an angle, so that looks good. We have to make this arm now, and this arm's gonna go on the inside, I think. Is there room? Ooh, it's pretty close. Okay, we're gonna punch, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take a pair of dividers, and we will scribe a nice arc, because look at that, that's not a nice arc. That's a nice arc. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, here's the hook. This is what goes over the top tube, allowing for the space of the rubber. How did I do this? I used this. So let's, I'm, I'm just gonna do a, a quick bend for you here, and then you can see what I did. So, this is my stop. And I basically went like this. There, that's what I did to make that bend. So somewhere around there. That's what we have to, that's the middle right about there. So what I figured is we're gonna have an eighth inch of rubber in there and this is about an eighth of an inch so if I'm careful, it's not going to scratch the tube. Yeah, see, it's, it's too close. That's where it wants to sit, so it needs to go over an eighth of an inch. So, what am I going to do for that? Oh, I could mill off, I could mill off an eighth of an inch there, couldn't I? Well, yeah. See, it's still it's still too far over. I need to I need to put a dog leg in this a little bit. So it fits, but it still needs to go over more. So, but we can hold the bike up. We have a stand, it's unfinished. I will work on it in the next, next day or two. You'll see some finished photos. And uh, I think I like it. Hi, I'm Paul Brody, we're back. Yesterday we were filming and after Mitch left, I decided that I was really quite unhappy with this arm and the hook. So I thought about it, sent a text to Mitch, asked him if he could please come back. So we're going to make a new arm. I wasn't, wasn't happy with the two-piece and the shape and all that. This one is going to get bent. So we need to heat this up, but this needs to be heat. No, this doesn't get heated. This is 6061, and it's, it's T6, 6061 T6. And the six means that it, it's tempered. That's the hardest you can make. 6061. So I'm going to take this part here, going to be, it's T0. When you heat it up and you just let it cool, it takes out the tempering. So hold it in the vise here, heat that up. So let's do that. And I also have to bend this over first. This has to be moved over 5 eighths of an inch. So let's do that. I'm using the soft jaws and the soft jaws are a little bit rounded. So I'm going to just hit this because I think it'll bend it enough. It doesn't like to be bent too much. Okay, so I need about five eighths of an inch to here. So there's five eighths, that's how much it needs to be bent. So that's not bad, look at that. That's pretty good right there. Okay. See that, see how it's bending easier? I can tell. Okay, 
So I'm hoping that's going to be about in line. That's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing to do, that's where the, where the center of the down tube is, right there. So what's going to happen is that's going to be, this, that's where the bend starts. So we need inch and a half bend. So we're going to, after we take out the heat treating, put that like that, we'll hammer that around and cut off the excess. Okay, we're going to heat this up, then we'll let it cool, and that should take out the temper. I know one thing you can do is to, I didn't do it, if you take acetylene and you put the soot onto this, when it gets hot enough and the soot burns off, that means you've taken out the heat treating. And that's, I think it's 600 degrees, something like that. I'm sure there's going to be comments. That should be good. I can't see that. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh. bending nicely. I don't think if it was still heat treated it would bend that nicely. So I must have knocked a bit of the temper out. And okay so it bent can you see that it's got a little Got a little high spot right there where it didn't bend smooth enough or easy enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to squash that down. Maybe I can put that in here and give it a squash. So this is hitting the vise on the bottom, so I can't go around anymore. But it looks like I've... Well, now I can do something else. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's, it's pretty good. So I want this to come round so that this is, is parallel with this side because then it's a 180. There we go. So that looks like a pretty good bend. It's not, not perfect right there, but this, this turned out quite nice. So I think what we'll do now, we'll take the bandsaw and we'll cut it off Looks pretty, I, I like that right there. You know, that's my worst fear. You do something like this and you bent it backwards. I've done that. It wasn't that long ago either. So that's how that fits like that. There you go. And this comes back so far and then it hits. I spent a little bit of time working on the clearance there. So it comes back and then you can feel it when it touches. So. So that should be right in the middle. Oh, look at that. That's not, 
I'm eyeballing it. Oh, it looks like this needs to go that way a little bit. OK, so let's, let's give that a little bend. All right, I'm a much happier guy now. I like this a lot better than that old one I made yesterday. So thank you for hanging out in the shop here with me and Mitch. We like coffees. If you buy us some coffees, helps the flow of our channel a lot. And uh, we appreciate all your support. Take care, see you next time. What I want to do now, oh, Mitch is gone. I'm going to move. <laughs>